Okay, so we're going to look at doing some shape keys. Uh, I'm going to use uh, specifically, uh, we're going to use a, a model of a face to do specifically a, a face shape keys on a character because this is where you use it the most. Uh, it's more practical doing it this way. So what I've got is um, Ruben's face. So what we're going to do is uh, you want to make sure first that you've mo you finished modeling this face. You're not going to change anything, change any of the vertices later on because it might mess this up. So you want to make sure you've finished with your model and you're ready to uh, get some expressions put in. So what you want to do is with the face selected, you want to go into your object data tab here, which is the triangle. And you want to go and expand the shape keys section. And you want to click the plus button and a basis comes up. This is now saved this model as it is. So what you want to do is pl click it again and you get key one. So let's double click that and name it. I'll name this jaw. So we're going to do the jaw movement first. And you want to go into edit mode now. And let's um, select some vertices at the bottom of the jaw there. You want to go to your proportional editing uh, editor, switch it on, and click it to connect it for this one, because we don't want to move the top of the mouth. We just want to move the bottom of the mouth, so only the vertices connected to these vertices will get um, affected. And let's press G, and you can see there it's moving. We'll just scroll the wheel so that it'll affect a little bit more. So a little bit of movement on that top lip, but that's okay. Let's move it to. Let's do it about there. And we click uh, left click to keep it there and that's done so if we go out of edit mode it switches back to the closed position that's because this jaw has a value of zero so there's the slider down here we've got zero if we slide this up you can see the jaw is opening to the position we just left it in so on one it has that position on zero it doesn't and that's what we want so now we want to put a bone in here so what we we'll, what i'll do here is Select my bone, the bones I've already done for the mesh, the the normal kind of armature bones. Go into edit mode, so we have our bones here. I'll select this bone and I'll duplicate it because this is already parented. If you, if you want, to, you can create a new bone. That's up to you, but you'll have to have it parented to the head bone up there. The reason for this is that if you move this head bone around, these ones follow it. So you always want them to follow the face. So I'm just going to select this one here, and in edit mode I'm going to shift D to duplicate. So it's already parented now to the head. So I'll drag it into his face a little bit, and go to front view, and where's it going? It's there. Let's bring it down to his jaw, and we'll scale that down as well. To around, to something like that. Um, we're going to rename this as well so we know where we are. We're going to rename this um, jaw bone. There you go. So that is done. That's easy to find now. So let's get out of edit mode. Go back to our mesh here. And what we want to do is on this slider for the jaw, we want to right click and click add driver. And it changes color there to let you know there's a driver added. And then we want to go down, split your screen there, and go to your graph editor. And down the bottom where it says F curve, you want to switch it to drivers. And you should get this up on the screen. Ruben's body underneath then is a key, and it says value, and in brackets it says jaw. And it says that because we named this, um, this shape key jaw. So with that selected, you want to go over to the menu on the right. If it's not there, hit the N key, and it'll pop up. And we scroll down, we got an error there, that's fine, ignore that for now. Where it says scripted impre uh, expression, you want to switch that to average value. And go down to where it says object slash bone in the red box here, you want to find Ruben's body armature, or whatever your armature is called. And in the bone, you want to find the jaw bone. So if you type in jaw, it comes up, click jaw bone. We switch this to the Y location. We switch this to a local expression for the space, uh, local space, sorry. Um, and you want to click add, add modifier and select generator. 
go down and in the bottom box here with the X here I want to select something like negative 25 and hit enter and then you want to hit update dependencies and then up here the now now this is my bone you can see it's taken on the shape of the eye bone because I duplicated it I should have sorted that out actually if I go back into edit mode and just turn that off de -de -de. maybe it's pose mode pose mode sorry let me just turn that off okay so we now have the bone as a normal bone so if I move this bone up and down now you can see it affects the mouth nice and easy so now what we want to do if if it if it's the speed is a bit wrong so all you'll have to do to get it right is go back into this menu down here and just change the value here like I could change this to um, I think 10 would be better let's see sorry about my cat there you go that's nice so with that done we just need to lock this now because this can be moved anywhere and you don't want that so let's lock that in so that with that selected go to your bone constraints and add a limit location and we want to limit the X we want to limit the Z so we've only whoops what's going on where's my bone gone it's all the way down on the floor I think it's because I got world space here. If we switch that to local space, there you go. It'll go back to where it was. So right now I can't move it at all because I've locked them all up here. So I want to uncheck the top, I think. Yeah, the top Y. It might be different with you because it depends on which way your bone is orientated. Uh, with me now, it's the top Y. But just, just play around and find which one you need to change. So I want to bring it down only to where the face stops which is there so I keep it there and press N I scroll to the top and find this location this Y location with my mouse hovering over it I'm going to click Control C to copy that value and then over this click Control V to paste the value and it rounds it up to 106 where it appears 10561 so it just rounds it up there so you can turn that on now and if you move this up and down you find that it locks both those positions nicely so you can't move it any more than uh, it is affecting the mesh so that way now if I alt R to um, alt G sorry to put it back into its normal position if you pass this on to an animator now he can he can't really go far wrong with it you can move it up and down there and that's it it's a little bit laggy because I got my recorder going as well my screen recorder so that's nice now the only thing left to do with this is to give it a custom shape like I have with these bones up here so the way to do that if I go to if I just go over here and put the cursor uh, select my mesh so I can add an object so let's add a plane I'll rotate on the X 90 degrees and we scale it down scale it down on the X and what I'll do is I'll make an arrow I like to make arrows so that people can see which way my uh, each bone is to be used so if I extrude that out on the side and do the same over here extrude it out this is really quick um, put it up there and then alt M and, doo -doo -doo. and just put a face in there so you can see now that is an arrow let me just drag these down make it a little longer and to change the orientation because I want this to be pointing down I should have done it on the bottom you have to rotate these in edit mode for them to make sense out the side there so if you do it out in object mode it doesn't affect anything if you do it in edit mode it will so if you just rotate on the Y 180 degrees and we'll name this um, I always start these shapes with the word shape um, shape arrow down because this can be used for multiple bones if I want a few bones to go down I can use it more than once so just shape arrow down and then what we want to do is select the bone and go to the bone tab up here and at the bottom where it says custom shape 
If we select in there and type shape, we should have it here, shape arrow down. So you can see now it's taking on the shape, although it is <laughs> really out of shape there. So what I want to do, I forgot to do something. If we select the shape and click Control A, I want to apply the rotation scale there. So it is now, you can see what I mean, it's out of, it's, it's out of, out of orientation there. It's pointing toward his chest. We don't want that. So what we can do here is go into edit mode up here. Rotate on the X axis and we can find, there you go. You can see down the bottom there that the arrow is down here. It's changing as I rotate this. So we want it to be there. So let's rotate on the X minus 90 degrees. And there you go, it's perfect. So now you can see the arrow here is in the right position, although it is out of place a little bit there. Let's go and put it more toward his chin. There you go. What we could actually do there is size it up a little bit. So go, but remember, it doesn't affect it if it's not in edit mode. So go into edit mode and then size it up so they can be seen a lot easier. There you go. Oops. So we have our arrow. Why is it not? Uh, it's not in pose mode. That's why. There you go. So you can see now his arrow there, and anybody who has this mesh and animator or whoever can see easily what you do with this bone. You pull it down. So there you go. That's that nice and easy. And with this, you can't delete this because if you delete this, this shape will disappear from here. But what I usually do is I put it on the last tab in the file you can see here all my shapes <laughs> that I've created for this mesh um, so I just check them all on the last tab so if I just um, click M and then select the last tab there it'll get rid of that let me unselect that tab so it's gone then and when you pull in this character into a animation file uh, you don't have to bring all those shapes in as long as the shapes are in the original file because you're only linking you still link into this file so the shapes can stay in this file you don't have to bring them in just bring in the armature um, and the body and these shapes will show up in the other file in the linked file so there you go you're good to go so just repeat those steps for every shape key you want to do I usually do blinkers um, for the eyes and, and whatnot I'll show you my finished um, version of this file Okay, so this is the finished file. As you can see, I've got shapes all over his face there for different for different things. So I've got the the jawbone here. I've got an up and down arrow. <laughs> um, we've got a left right one on this one as well because I've done this just a quick one. I don't don't usually do mouth controls this way, but this is how I did it for this particular character. So you go down. He does like a ooh um, shape. If we go up, he smiles, and left and right, he just does different kind of mouth shapes. So we're using these kind of shapes here in conjunction with the mouth opening and closing. You can make some pretty good um, looking talking movements. So at the top here, you can see I got some for the eyes. Here, I got one above each eye for the for the winkers, and the same on the right there. But I've also got a bone in the middle here, which I've parented these two bones too, so I can use it to blink nice and easily without having to animate two separate bones. So I can just grab the one and pull them open and close for the blink every few seconds. Um, I've got this one at the top here, which is uh, up and down and rotate, as you can see. So, I mean, it makes him look a little bit angrier. And if I rotated it... It lifts one eyebrow. If I rotate the other way, it lifts the other eyebrow. It's probably not the best way to do this, but that's the way I did it for ease. Because this character is not going to need very detailed expressions. And I got the ones on the ears, then it moves the ears upside, uh, up and down. And that's about it, I think, for this one. But you can do as many as you want. A little advice is to only do what you need for the particular animation you're working on. For example, if you've got a miserable character doesn't need to smile, then, you know, in the whole script, there's no point doing a whole smile expression because it's just a waste of time. This is quite time-consuming. Um, so basically, just keep doing what what I showed you. And, um, to, you know, to do a new one, as you can see, i got a lot here. 
you just go back where this I got Joe there. You just click plus and it starts a new one and just repeat the process over and over again until you've got all the ones you want. As you can see I got all these in this particular one. So you go have fun. And uh, I'll see you again. Thank you very much.